this is that. Now, now for you to get that, you have to understand what is that? What is that? In order to understand that, you, you got to go way back to Abraham. You got to go way back actually to Genesis because I want to give you some Pentecost paradigm. Why God set it in motion and why we are standing in a season that God ordained to visit from heaven. In the Pentecostal season, it's when heaven came down to earth with supernatural revelation and demonstration. We are standing in a season where heaven wants to manifest. Ooh, just put your hand over your head like this. What am I saying to you tonight? Something from heaven is trying to get down to you. And you got to understand the revelation. When Adam sinned, when he sinned, he locked the power, the kingdom the glory, the nature of God out of a realm. It wasn't no small thing what Adam did. What Adam did was shut down the government of God from being on heaven. It shut down the image of God from being represented in the people. It shut down heaven's authority, heaven's dignity, heaven's, heaven's seed in the earth realm. When Adam sinned, God lost a family. He lost a race of people, a kind of people that was supposed to populate planet earth. And ever since Adam sinned, God began setting in motion the plan of restoration for everything that was lost. Before they could even get out of the garden, God says, I've already got a plan set in motion to get it back. Everything that you lost in the earth, I've got a plan to get it back. Got a plan to get it back. And God started right there in the garden and he began to move the pieces in place down through the generations down through the ages in order to get back this complete restoration of everything that was lost in the garden that was the plan and so God begins to look down into the earth realm because now that he's given dominion to man in the earth he's got to find somebody in the earth that can align with heaven so that God could get his will done and he can get restoration manifested. So when God looks in the earth realm, he's not just looking for people. This is why he can't just use anybody. God's looking for purpose that can be manifested through people. So when God looks at you, he's looking through you to see if you have the capacity to handle what he's trying to do. Oh, my God. And so he began to look and he began to look and he found Noah. And he says, this is not going the way I planned. I cannot bring restoration like I want to with the earth like it is. Men's hearts are wicked continuously. And so he sends a flood, wipes out the whole planet, and then saves Noah and his family and two of every kind. And God says, we're going to start this all over. But then it's not too long that Noah is found drunk sleeping in a tent. And God says, you were good to get this started, but I can't really get through you what I want to get through you. Because Noah, watch this, did not have the capacity to produce it. Now, what do I mean by the capacity to produce it? Because the restoration that God was going to send through the earth realm had to come through a lineage because God had to send it through a man. 
And God was searching, 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 searching. Who am I going to send this? Who can, who can I do? Who can I use? Who can I use? And then his eyes gazed upon Abraham. And when God found Abraham, God found a man who had the capacity. To believe in his plan of total redemption, therefore allowing God to get it into the earth realm and through his lineage so that it could get into manifestation. Which means God chose Abraham because of Abraham's faith. He could believe God in a dimension nobody else could. Because Abraham didn't just have faith for himself. Abraham had faith for you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Abraham was used by God not because of the depth of his faith, but because of the scope of his faith. Which means God had to have somebody that could understand the complete plan of redemption in all of its mysteries and be crazy enough to say, I believe that. <laughs> and God said, that's the one I'm looking for. Now, let, let me parenthetically insert this because this is what hinders a lot of you from being used by God is that you got too much sense. You, oh, God. You no, you're not listening to me. I understand that you got PhDs and I understand you got degrees and I understand your pedigree and I understand you're pretty and you're cute. But when it comes to God, like Paul, you got to cut all that dung because God says the only thing I need out of you is your faith. I'm looking for somebody I can get my will through. And God, God saw Abraham. He saw Abraham, oh, trust me, we're going to run in a minute, but I got to I gotta get you. I got to get you through Pentecost. So God chose Abraham because of Abraham's faith. Well, you say, well, what did Abraham believe? There are some scriptures that are mind-boggling in the scriptures because Galatians tells us that what Abraham believed was the gospel. Now, this is crucial for you to understand about Pentecost and where we are, which means God preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham. And Abraham believed God. In other words, he shared with him by revelation, can't wait to get to heaven to talk to him, to talk about everything that he saw and everything he didn't see and everything he saw later. But Abraham believed God. Now, what was the gospel? The gospel is total redemptive restoration, salvation of everything that was lost in that garden. Which means if it was lost in that garden, if it started in that garden, then whatever salvation is, it is to restore, recover, renew, repair, revive, redeem. It is to bring back everything that was lost. See, some of you think salvation is just on your way to heaven. Thank God for that. But that ain't what salvation is all about. Salvation is not just about you on your way to heaven. It's about everything from heaven on its way to you. Oh, my God. Put your hand on your head. Come on, put, it, put your hand on your head and say, change the way I think. I ain't waiting to go to heaven. I'm going to pull it down while I'm here. You were not created to wait to go. You were created to pull manifestations of it into the earth realm, into your life. And the Bible says... God beforehand preached the gospel under Abraham and he believed it. And watch this. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Wow. Which means God before salvation and before Christ preached the gospel to Abraham before it even manifested. Abraham believed it before it was ever a reality. And God says, because you believe me, I'm going to treat you like you already got it. 
Oh, my God. See, this is crucial. This is crucial. This is crucial. He says, I'm going to treat you like you already have righteousness with me. And your faith is going to open up a line of credit with me. Where, where what other generations are going to have to wait to get, you going to start experiencing it right now. And the mystery of Abraham is because of his faith, he opened up a line of credit with God to begin to treat him like him and his generations were saved on credit. Yeah, my God. Yeah, 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 your credit is good with me. I'm, I'm going to give you some stuff even before it manifests. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed up the process and you're going to start receiving stuff that other people are going to look at you and say, why does that happen to Abraham? Why does that happen to the seed of Abraham? Abraham is going to say, because I got a line of credit. Y'all don't, <laughs> I got a line of credit with God because my faith has opened up now an accounting of righteousness with God where he treats me and makes covenant with me like I'm already saved. 